he so cute? See, but once I start talking, she'll pay attention to what I'm doing and forget. Um, I put a picture on my Facebook today and on my Instagram of them. I had um, gotten out of the shower and gotten dressed, and I walked out into the living room. And usually when you see something cute, you don't have any way of taking a picture because your phone's somewhere else. And so I had the phone in my hand. I'm like, oh. Then I'm flipping, trying to get it to the camera. And I'm like, by the time I get it here, the cat's probably going to jump down. But she didn't, surprisingly. So I'm going to try to put this on. Focus for you guys who aren't on either of those. And show you what I saw. There they were. Chilling on the couch. Aren't they cute? I showed that to Dad. He goes, that's a good one. You better keep that one. <laughs> and I'm froze. Come on, computer. Come back to me. Come back. Come back. Thank you. You just have to sweet talk it. Um, I did record a recipe today. The pineapple banana mini loaves. I don't know where the hummingbird comes in, but they're actually called pineapple banana hummingbird mini loaves. There are no hummingbirds included. Um, I just made the bread. I did not make the glaze to go on it, and I'm glad I didn't because it would have been too sweet for me. Dad was in agreement. I had I waited for him to get home to try it to record. That's the last clip that's going to be on there. So once I get done doing this, I'm gonna do a little commenting, then I'm gonna go over there and plug my get my stuff in that computer over there. So I ended up with I think a nine by nine cake of it and nine mini loaves. I think that's what, what I end up with. I'm gonna give some of it away to our neighbors and take a loaf out to grandma and to Larry and Joni and to my cousins and stuff like that. So yeah. It is very good. And there's another variation that says that you can do, um, instead of doing bananas, to leave out the cinnamon and the bananas and then substitute a cup of maraschino cherries chopped up in there and make pineapple cherry bread. So maybe I'll try that someday too. I'm definitely going to put this in with my recipes. It was easy and good. Very moist. Now I'm going to talk about a subject I rarely delve into, football. I know I talked about it recently because of my cousin. I'm going to talk about that again and I'm going to talk about Notre Dame. First, my cousin's team won today. Woo -woo. I think it was like 36 to... Hang on, because I texted my cousin who wasn't at the game. 36 to 14. So now they will play next Friday at the stadium where the Lions play. It'll be televised, so Dad and I will get to watch it on TV. Dad would really like, like to go, but he said three hours is just away. It's just too far to go. Um, so he's going to stay home with me, and we're going to watch it together on TV. And then my cousin Justin, my dad said he did really well today. He probably went 125 yards today. They're a running team. They're Like I said, that you can't tell who has the ball. And he ran in a touchdown. He assisted on getting a lot of yards to get touchdowns. He um, he was their main guy today. Dad said he did, he did awesome. So that was good to hear. He loves the game of football. He does. Um, and we just got done watching Notre Dame. They are now 11-0. They won 38-0. That was exciting. It's senior night. This is the last home game at Notre Dame for the season. And this is the last game the seniors get to play there. And uh, one of the co-captains, um, Montai, Montai Teo, I think that's how you say his name. He's a defensive player. He, I've seen an interview with him, and he's just a good guy. And his, all his family came in from Hawaii and... Um, Everybody in the audience had these yellow lays on, and uh, it was it was a good night for Notre Dame. I know South Bend is probably hopping, hopping. So, yay Notre Dame! Next week they play USC in California, and hopefully they'll they'll play for a championship. We'll see how that goes. 
Okay, off of football. <laughs> That's been my day pretty much. I just baked and watched football with that. Well, I only watched the last half of the Notre Dame game. Um, I watched stuff on the DVR today. Kitty, don't scratch the carpet or I'll have to kill you. Yes, I will. Um, what do you even have on the DVR? Oh, the X Factor. And Ellen. Because I record Ellen. You can get through a lot of that stuff with the fast forward button, let me tell you. Talked to Grandma on the phone for a minute today. She'd gone out to the cemetery and she's like, Did you guys take that one thing? And I'm like, Yeah, Grandma, it was broken, so we cleared that off. It was like a um, fiber optic light that stuck into the ground that had like a hummingbird on it. And we had to find all the pieces and pick it up. And actually, it's probably still in the back of my car. We gotta throw it away. She's like, I figured you guys probably picked it up, but I wanted to make sure. Um, she took out some holiday things, I guess. Anything else, Kitty? Am I missing something? No? Hmm. I guess I'm not. Now I'm going to upload this. I'm going to go comment. Oh, yeah, there was one other thing. I was watching the news last night, the 6 o'clock news, and, um, Inevitably, hunting season, you always hear of somebody getting killed either by being shot accidentally, having a heart attack, falling out of a tree, uh, some sort of accident. Last night, you know, Hunter found dead, uh, or it was a local man found dead, uh, apparently coming back from hunting on his ATV. And when they put the name up there, I'm like, oh my goodness. It was one of our one of our farm guys, one of our um, customers. His name's Elmer. And uh, as soon as I saw that, I called Ron. I'm like, have you seen the news? He goes, no, I just got home. I'm like, Elmer died. I mean, Elmer, they found Elmer dead today. He goes, what? I'm like, yeah. Apparently, I was reading the article a little bit ago because they had more information on there. He got out hunting. What are you doing? And he was coming back. And somehow, some way, he flipped his ATV in his driveway of his home. That's how close he was to home. He was in the driveway. And um, he must have stayed there all night. His brother came the next morning to help on the farm. Um, Augustus? I want to call him Augustus. I think that's his name. Um, they're, they're old school farmers. Elmer was 69. But Ronnie's like, he was a really old 69. He looked like he was, like, pushing 80. And, uh, hey, Mrs. The cat's going to die live on camera soon. You want one of these? You better be good. So, Augustus showed up at 7.30 yesterday morning and in the driveway around back. Because, you know, farms, you have all kinds of drives and things. Um... He found his brother pinned underneath the ATV upside down, and he was he was pronounced dead in the driveway. And when I called Ron, I told him, he goes, man, he has had a bad year. Because apparently, early in, in the year, a couple of his farm buildings burnt down. Then, his crops were decimated by the weather we had, the hot weather. Now, he is no longer here. Poor Elmer. I've been watching. I need to, hopefully they'll have the obituary in the paper tomorrow because my cousin wants to go um, to show his respect because he knows all of all those farm guys. So it was just weird to see a name come up on the screen that I knew. And I, and I froze again. Come back to me. Come on. Camera. Camera. Okay. I might have sounded like a devil at some point or a demon to I don't know. Sometimes when it freezes, it sounds fine, and sometimes it makes me sound all wah, wah, wah. So that was weird. And then they had an article in there about the deer again. How, any, no, people aren't seeing a whole lot of deer around here because of them all dying. We have lost lots and lots of deer in this area. And it's mainly in Michigan. 
they were saying Indiana, the disease hasn't been found in very many places, but in Michigan, many, many dead deer. Yeah. And another thing that's been in the news lately, I'm just going, I'm like a news person now, <laughs> is this pharmaceutical company who made these shots that are put into your spine to help with pain or whatever. I don't know the whole deal. But they were tainted. And they're concentrated in Michigan and Indiana. I guess some were given in Elkhart, Indiana, and there were some in Michigan. Um, they were causing people to get meningitis. And now, like, 30-some-odd people have died from, from it and are sick. So, big trouble. And the last thing we'll hit on... What? Before I go, <laughs> is the hostess. I won't miss Hostess, I really won't, but I really feel sorry for all the people who are losing their jobs. It's a sad situation for those people. Because um, we very rarely ever bought them. When we did, it was strawberry time and Dad would buy Twinkies for his strawberries, but since I don't even eat strawberries anymore because I can't. So. Now, if it had been Little Debbie and they would have took the Nutty Bars away, I might have been a little like, oh, but yeah, I don't care. Even then, I probably wouldn't care. Okay, kitty. She's on the corner. Now I'm going to go after touching on all the news. That's the news in my neck of the woods. I'll see you all day after tomorrow, because tomorrow you're going to get the recipe. No vlog or roomie. So you get to listen to this really long one because you're not going to get one tomorrow. Bye.